started on today's notes over points, lines, and planes. The first thing we're going to talk about are, are called undefined terms. What are they? Undefined terms are the most basic figures of geometry and cannot be defined using other figures. They are the basic building blocks for geometry. So let's go over some undefined terms, points, lines, and planes. A point is represented by a dot and has no size. It names the location, so it has zero dimension. All right, you can't really see dots, but it just names the location. And you can see in my picture on the right, I have point B. How would I describe that or notate it, which is just a fancy schmancy word for write it? I would write it by using a capital letter. So I would just call that point B. If I'm going to talk about a line, what is a line? A line is a straight path that has no thickness and extends forever. So it's one dimensional. I have over here in my picture a line. I have two points on the line. And on any line, there's an infinite number of points. I just exaggerate that point, right? Where I, I, I put a dot there, right? So how would I notate this line? I could call this line AB. I'm just going to write two points on the line, which I've only given you two, A and B, and then I'm going to put a line above it with arrows going in both directions. I could also call it line BA, and again, I'm going to put that bar on top, arrows going in both directions. That's how I would write line AB, line BA. Order doesn't matter. I could also call this line E, and there's like a little lowercase script letter that that is used to describe that line. So I could describe this line or write it any one of these ways that I've given you. Now let's talk about our third undefined term. It's a plane. A plane is a flat surface that has no thickness and extends forever. So now we're in the two-dimensional realm. A plane, I need three points to name a plane. Any three points, any non-collinear, which is what we'll talk about in a second, but any three points that do not lie in the same line. Or three, point, or three points not on a line. I'm going to have to fix that. It will be fixed on your notes. A script capital letter. So you can see right here, I can name this plane by plane A. It's a script capital letter, or I can describe any three points that are not on the same line. So I could also call this plane XYZ. I could also call it plane YXZ or YZX. Any order, you can write these three points in any order when you are describing this plane, but you do need three points that are not on the same line. So I'm gonna write here that can be written in any order can be written in any order. And now let's move on to two additional vocabulary terms that you will see, collinear and coplanar. So first, what do you think those mean? Collinear, that has the word line in it, and coplanar has the word plane in it. I have this image on the right, and I'm going to use it when I give my examples. Collinear are points that lie on the same line. So using this image, I could say that points W, X, and Y are collinear. They all lie on that same line. So W, X, and Y are collinear. So now let's talk about non-collinear. They're points that do not lie on the same line. Well, what are what's an example of maybe three points that do not lie on the same line? I could say W, here, let me erase this. I could say W, X, and maybe Z are non-collinear. So W, X, and Z are non-collinear. They do not lie on the same line. Now let's talk about coplanar. So using this image right here, I have two planes, right? And I have basically two parallelograms. One is 
underneath the other. And you can see that it's underneath because the part, if we were like in the three dimensional world and I had like maybe two papers on top of each other, like, you know, the one that's on bottom, you can see that it's the, the back part or the part that you can't see would be back here. And so when we're, when we're drawing this on paper, the part that you can't see, we would have maybe like a dotted line or a dashed line, something like that, or, or no line. So coplanar are points that lie on the same plane. So what are some points that are coplanar? Well, we could say that W, X, Y, and Z, those are coplanar points. W, X, Y, and Z are coplanar. Okay, so now let's talk about some points that are non-coplanar. Um, and I, I like to maybe give you four points that are non-coplanar because I need three points to, to name a plane. So let's just throw in maybe three points and then a fourth one that's not um, on the same plane. So maybe I could say W, X, Z, those are coplanar points, but V would make it non-coplanar. So W, X, Z, and V are non-coplanar. So again, this is just this is just vocabulary terms, and we're just given this image. These images we're describing them. So now let's move on to segments and rays. A line segment is a part of a line consisting of two points and all points between them. So how do we name this line segment right here? Well, you can see it's got endpoints, right? I don't have arrows on the end. I have endpoints. How would I write it? I would write it line segment CD with just a bar over it. I could also call it segment DC. So the order doesn't matter when I'm naming a line segment as it doesn't when you're naming a line. So an endpoint is just a point at one end of a segment. So here I have another line segment with endpoints X and Y. So how would I, the endpoint would just be X. I also have an endpoint Y. Okay, those are just the, the points on the ends of the segment. What is a ray? Our next vocabulary term, a ray is a part of a line that starts at one point and extends forever in one direction. So it's a part of a line, right? But notice I don't have this over here, right? I don't have, um, oh, well, is it going to let me erase it? I don't have that. I just have one endpoint and then it extends forever in one direction. And how do I name that? I would name it ray e f and i would start it right there now could i name it ray f e i cannot because i have to name my endpoint first it has to be written with the endpoint first so this doesn't work okay um uh, let's go ahead and write that down so it must be written with the endpoint first. I'm gonna write it like that. You've got to write the endpoint first. Now, and be very careful because what if it were written like this, right? Where it's like F E. Okay, well then you would write Ray F E. You whatever you do, you write that endpoint first. So just make sure that you're notating it correctly. And rays are trickier than uh, all of these. Okay, and now opposite rays. So when you think of opposite, they're going to go, um, you know, opposite of one another. So they're two rays that have the same endpoint. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is, oh, I've got my image over there. I don't know why I'm drawing an image. I've got this line right here. Okay, um, so that I could call this line ED, line EF, line DF, whatever. I just need two points for the line. But when we talk about rays, I could say, here's my common endpoint, and I have ray df. And I would write it like that. And ray de. Ray de. Notice I did not write ed. I wrote with the endpoint first. So opposite rays have the same endpoint. They have a common endpoint, and they go in opposite directions. Okay, 180 degrees and form a line. 
All right, let's move on to postulates and intersecting lines and planes. So here's a new vocabulary term for you in geometry. A postulate, which is also, also known as an axiom, is a statement that is accepted as true without proof. You do not need to prove anything that I'm about to tell you. You just accept it as true. Postulates about points, lines, and planes help describe geometric properties. So the first postulate, and these postulates do not have a name. So I've just numbered them one, two, and three, and we're just gonna describe them. The first postulate that you'll accept as true without proof, and a lot of these you'll be like, well, yeah, that makes sense. But in geometry, we're gonna have to prove certain things, and we do it in a very specific logical process well, this right here, we just, we might have to use in our proofs. So the first one is through any two points that exist out there, there is exactly one line. So here I have two points and let's call those points A and B. You don't have to, but A and B through any two points, there is exactly one line. Our next postulate says through any three non-collinear, that being a key vocabulary term, through any three non-collinear points, there is exactly one plane containing them. Remember, they have to be non-collinear because I could have three points that all lie on the same line. They are collinear. I need three non-collinear points to describe a plane. There is exactly one plane. So I have, oh my gosh, my lines are terrible. So I have a line right here through these two points. I could say there's another line here. I could say there's another line here. So I need three non-collinear points to name a plane. The next uh, postulate says, if two points lie in a plane, then the line containing them also lies in the same plane. All right, let's move on to um, some postulates about intersecting lines and planes. So when I think of intersecting, I think of where do they cross, okay? So if two lines intersect, then, then, then they intersect at exactly one point right there. So two lines are going to intersect at a point, at a point. And if two planes intersect, then they're going to intersect in exactly one line. So here I have two planes. Again, I have two planes crossing that like forms a three-dimensional figure. And you can see the part that you can't see is actually the dotted lines. Okay, so that's the part that you wouldn't be able to see. But notice where they intersect is going to be at one line. So two planes intersect intersect I don't know why I'm writing this in capital letters at a line this is what I need to write in capital letters they intersect at a line okay let's move on to some guided practice and when we go through this I'm going to go through this fairly quickly you can refer to the notes that we've just taken so in this first th three examples I'm going to use this image to the right this little Lego piece and I've got some basically I've just labeled some lines and points on this Lego piece. So it says name three lines. Well, let's see, I've got line, just name three, right? Um, DF, that's a line. I could call it line DF. Remember, I need a bar on top, arrows going in both directions. If you wanted to write line FD, that also works. These are just possible answers. What's another one? Let's see, here's uh, DC line D C line on top just make sure you're notating it correctly and then what's another one mm, we've got E F right here line E F and I'm gonna erase all of this let's move on name three coplanar points coplanar what does it mean they lie on the same plane three coplanar points let's say A B and C a, B, and C. And if I wanted, if I wanted to write 
maybe four non-coplanar points, I might write A, B, C, and then maybe E over here, right? Because E is not on that same plane. Name a plane on the image. So you can see in these script letters right here, there's K and there's M. Let's say plane M, right? That's a plane on the image. I could also call it plane, and I'm gonna do this right here, let's see. Let me erase all this so I don't confuse you. What's another way I could describe plane M? I could call it also known as maybe plane, I just need three points on that plane, maybe C, D, and E. Because remember, you just need three points to name a plane. So I can name it using those three points in any order, or I could just call it plane M. Let's move on to four through seven, say sketch and label the following. They're regarding segments and rays. So number four, sketch a line containing M and N. Well, here's my line and it contains the points M and N. Easy enough, easy peasy. Let's move on to number five. Sketch and label a ray with endpoint P that contains S. Now a ray, remember, has an endpoint. Right? It just goes in one direction forever and ever, not in both directions. And I know that the endpoint is P, and I know that there's a point on the line that is also S. Number six, sketch a pair of opposite rays that contain the common endpoint G. Okay, well, I know opposite rays are going to form a line, and my common endpoint is G. That's going to be right there in the middle. And so let's give two other points on this line, maybe E and F. And so you can see that my opposite rays would be GF. Notice how I write it, write it with the end point first, and then GE. So opposite rays, they're gonna have that same end point right here, G, right? That same end point, and that's gonna be written first. Number seven, sketch plane B that contains the points Q, R, and S. Okay, so plane B, the easiest way is to like draw this parallelogram right here, and I'm gonna call it plane B, and it's gonna contain three points that are not on the same line. So I'm not gonna draw, um, or I guess it just contains the points Q, R, and S, but I'm gonna draw them like this, all right? Q, R, and S, and you can label them any way you want, we're just sketching these figures, okay? So there's my plane and it contains these points and I've also labeled it plane B. Let's move on to our last example. This is regarding intersecting lines and planes. It says sketch the following and I've already got a parallelogram over here, script letter B, which tells me this is plane B. I'm gonna sketch line R that lies in plane B at the right. Okay, let's sketch line R. And lines are labeled by lowercase script letters. Planes are la labeled by uppercase. Then we're going to sketch line N that intersects line R. Okay, so I could draw that a number of ways, but it doesn't lie in plane B. Okay, so if it intersects line R, it might come in like this. This is N, and then maybe goes through that plane and then maybe like out the bottom down here and that'll be line n and so you could draw it like that or the part that you can't see you could also draw it like that right with like the dotted portion of that and that it concludes your notes over points lines and planes i hope it was helpful